This is Dave VE3OI, and this video is about the update I made to Bruce Hall's W8BH's Morse code tutor firmware. Let me first introduce the Bruce Hall Morse tutor kit. It's shown here in the picture. It's a standalone uh, a kit. It's got a, a TFT display and as well it's got an interface that you can connect a key or a paddle. There are two versions. There's an STM version, STM32 version, the blue pill, and there's also ESP32 version. The ESP32 version has Wi-Fi connectivity and allows uh, two-way communication between the units. Probably the best place to get additional information on the Morse code tutor is to visit Bruce Hall's website. This is WAPH uh, website and under Arduino projects he's got a section for Morse code tutor where he describes you know where he got the idea from, uh, how it works, how the the source code works, how the software works as well he's got uh, the installation guide for setting up the blue pill which is the STM32 or the ESP32 version which is what I'll be talking about uh, for the remainder of this video. In addition, Bruce Hall has a GitHub uh, page that has lots of information uh, as well, and it includes the uh, source code for both, both the SP32 and for the STM32 version as well. The change I made to the firmware is the way that the Morse code tutor interacts with another Morse code tutor using the Wi-Fi module that's part of the ESP32. The ESP32 has a Wi-Fi module and there is a library called ESP Now which is what the um, the current firmware of the uh, Morse code tutor uses and that allows two Morse code tutor units to talk wirelessly between each other in an ad hoc network in a point-to-point -point network there is no access point or Wi-Fi router required. The limitation of this mode is that the units must be in close proximity or a few hundred feet away and this is probably ideal in a group setting where you've got multiple people sending and receiving Morse code and it would be a great tool for for example in a classroom but this does not work very well when you've got geographic separation between the two units where they're potentially separated for kilometers or hundreds of kilometers away. Bruce also has a YouTube video that describes how these units communicate or more so demonstrates how the un units uh, communicate and it's uh, available at, at this YouTube link here or you can access it from his website there is a link here that describes it the two-way com. I took the original firmware which was written by Bruce Hall and I used Platform IO to modify it to uh, be able to use the broader internet instead of using a point-to-point -point, um, ESP now connection. Platform IO is compatible with uh, Ar Arduino IDE, so whatever code I wrote will simply go into the Arduino IDE in a plug and play manner. You just have to make sure you use the most current uh, version of the IDE and board libraries and uh, other Adafruit li libraries. With the updated firmware, the ESP32 Morse code tutors would connect to a Wi-Fi router to an internet server and communicate uh, that way between each other. And right now I'm using a, a free AWS Amazon Web Services uh, EC2 Linux platform as the central server which will pass messages to each other. It uses the MQTT messaging transport to exchange messages between the Morse code tutors. So with the current firmware, each Morse code tutor must be connected to a Wi-Fi router and that router must provide a gateway address and as well as a DNS server. 
if you connect with a phone or a PC to your current Wi-Fi router and you're able to access the internet, this will simply uh, connect seamlessly to that Wi-Fi router. There's nothing you have to do. Each Morse code tutor unit must be configured with a unique identifier and currently that unique identifier is a three character string that I randomly generate uh, characters for. This is used to uniquely identify each unit. Let me take a moment and give a brief introduction to what MQTT is and how it operates. Now there are many many YouTube videos that describes uh, MQTT and gives a lot greater clarity. I'm just going to provide you a high level overview of uh, how it works and what it is. So basically MQTT stands for Message Queue Telemetry Transport and came from IBM and basically what it's used for is for collecting messages from a sensor like a uh, PLC or a meter or some sort of temperature like a temperature gauge or a pressure meter and these devices will publish data about what pressure it has or what temperature it has and sends that information out to a uh, some sort of an end device such as a PC, a web server or maybe a mobile phone and these devices collect that information and may make a decision about that uh, information. The way the architecture is laid out is that there is a central broker which is the server. Then there are clients and each client can publish or subscribe to the broker. So a client may publish a message to the broker and a client may also subscribe to the broker to get messages. Each um, client will either publish to a topic, to something called a topic, or will subscribe to a topic. The best way to describe it, a topic, it's like a groups.io a group or Twitter or Discord where if you uh, subscribe to a groups.io forum, anytime you send a message, an email message to that forum, the forum takes that and reflects it back to anyone who is subscribing to that forum. So it's a very similar architecture. MQTT sends messages in text and it's free text. You can send any text message you want and it's up to the publisher and the subscriber to figure out what to format and, and how to parse that message. This describes how the Morse tutor uses MQTT to communicate with another Morse code tutor. There's an MQTT client that's embedded into the Morse code tutor's firmware and that has a hard-coded DNS name that um, it uses to connect to the Amazon MQTT broker. The MQTT client will publish and subscribe to a topic and any other unit that subscribes to that topic will receive any message that's published to it. So for example, if you were to use your paddles or key to generate Morse code on this Morse code tutor, the MQTT client will package that and send a published message to the topic to the MQTT broker and that message then gets reflected to anyone that's subscribing to that topic. So in the case uh, this Morse code uh, tutor here may generate a CQ message and that gets published to the broker and anyone who is subscribing to that topic will get that message including this device itself. So it'll get a copy of that message coming back. So the publisher ignores any messages that it sends. I'd like to walk you through a demo of the current firmware that I've uh, written. And what I have is I have my Morse code tutor here with the new firmware and that's connected to a paddle, an iambic paddle. And since I don't have another Morse code tutor to test with, what I had to do was simulate a tutor in 
a local Linux workstation that I have. I have two terminal windows running and in one terminal window I'll be running the MQTT subscription program and that will monitor and receive any messages from the broker that is sent by my Morse code tutor. In the second terminal window um, I'm running the, sub the publishing application which will publish messages to the topic that the MQTT broker will forward to the uh, Morse code tutor. So basically I could generate Morse code in this window and this Morse code tutor will pick it up and display it. There are also several to-dos that I need to do with the firmware. Um, one of which is of course a live test with another Morse code tutor. And uh, the other thing is I need to add configuration parameters such as the Wi-Fi, SSID, the topic name and uh, so forth. And as well, I need to figure out how to distribute this uh, firmware, this updated firmware. So I need to talk to Bruce Hall and uh, figure out how best to uh, provide this firmware to anyone that wishes to use it. This is Platform IO, which I use to develop the uh, or update uh, Bruce Hall's Morse code uh, tutor firm firmware. And what it's showing here, it's showing the console output. So this is a terminal that's connected to the console on the ESP32 and I'll be seeing various messages here that uh, I generate in the firmware. Here's the two terminal windows that are connected to my local Linux workstation here that I'll be simulating a Morse code tutor with. So in the first uh, window I will run the subscription program which will allow me to monitor uh, MQTT messages coming from my Morse code tutor. And in this window, I'll be able to generate messages that'll be sent to the MQTT broker. And basically what I'll do here is I'll just run a script I have, and that uh, script generates uh, Morse code uh, messages that'll be sent to the broker and then forwarded on to the uh, Morse code tutor. I also have a camera which is recording what is being displayed on the uh, Morse code tutor's uh, LCD screen. So the first thing I, ha I have to do is I have to enable two-way communications. Here now you could see that it's initializing and it's uh, connecting to the uh, Amazon AWS uh, MQTT broker and it's connected and we've got a successful connection messages and it just sends out an arbitrary CQ message. So that works. So now if I was to generate uh, Morse code using the paddles, the MQTT client here will publish those messages to the broker and it will be displayed here. Now, I don't know Morse code. I'm just going to play around with the paddles. And you can see each time it sends a message out and uh, the message gets displayed here. It's get picked up by the uh, subscriber here. And now I'm going to go to this window and I'm going to generate um, I'm going to generate some Morse code which will get picked up here. And as you can see, uh, it displays the Morse code that this script generates. 
So that concludes the demo and as well concludes the video. Thank you for watching.